What'd you take away from the scrimmage? What'd you learn about your group? Uh, well, I learned that uh, I think when we, you know, when we play clean and we're confident in what we're doing, I think we've got some some weapons. I know we have some weapons and some uh, some makings of a, of a really good offense. And uh, but a lot of mistakes, you know, a lot of first first scrimmage mistakes. That to some degree. Um, you, you kind of know in the mind that they're going to be some of those going to happen, but you know, like we got to get it cleaner. We got to play a cleaner brand of football. That was the big thing that jumped out to me. Is that turnovers? It about? really wasn't the turnovers. We we really took care of the ball pretty well during the during the scrimmage, but it was more the details. You know, the details that start with me, passing them down to the coaches and on, and just just some loose details uh, with you know just some of it's some of it was assignment based, some of it was just like you know maybe a, a read by the quarterback. Uh, you know, a, a fit by the O-line, a hat placement out, you know, here or there. So just details that are the difference between, you know, winning football and not. And so we've got to get better in that world. How would Josh Cruz solidified himself at center? What would you see from him? Well, he's just, he's just really consistent. You know, that's, that's what the coach was preaching to our guys today about, not preaching, but talking to our guys at the end of practice about, like, the best thing you can do is be the best version of you every day and be the same guy uh, as you continue to climb and get better. And Josh is just... Uh, just been ultra consistent uh, since since I've been here uh, in his development, his understanding. He's got an incredible understanding uh, of offensive football and seeing the box the way it's supposed to be uh, seen. And he's a he's a great leader, and we're really excited about where, where he's at right now. Well, Zai said, you know, about Josh said that you kind of have to be a little savage to play center. Is that a fair assessment? Well, I don't know. Yeah, I think you got to have an element of that. There's a lot going on now. I mean, there's uh, Bart puts a lot on those guys, and uh, – and, and most offenses do, you know, for the center, the communication, the pre-snap communication. I mean, he's the, he directs all the traffic up there. That's a lot. And then, then, to, then to have a guy in our defense playing right over the top of you that's 300-something pounds, you know, and it's just trying to run his hands right through, right through your midline as you snap the ball. That's, that's, I, I can't imagine doing that. And uh, but he, those guys, he's embraced that and done a really good job in that role. The biggest things you've seen from Luke so far as you into the second week game? I'd say consistency as well. You know, Luke's got a really good understanding uh, of what what we're doing offensively. I mean, he's, uh, you know, he he and John both are, um, you know, what I would say savvy players. You know, John's a little bit older than Luke, been around the block a little bit more, but but you both of them, you can see they've they've played football, they've been in systems, they've been taught, and they've retain, retained that learning and they've translated into what we're doing here. But Luke's got a really incredible mind for the game. Uh, and that's been really impressive to me. What's the biggest thing you took away from last year that you're using this year, going into the second year, whatever that may be for you? Well, I think, you know, it's, I mean, there's always, there's a, that could be a really long question. You guys know I can answer questions and take them a long <laughs> way. So I could, we could, we could be here with between now and kick. Word. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, like, I think it's, I think it's about, you have to, you have to systematically just empower your guys to play with confidence. And the way you do that is through volume of repetition and understanding the schemes like in and out. And, I, and, and, and I, there was times last year that probably we didn't completely understand that. Uh, and part of it was probably there was a volume involved there with me of trying to put the offense in. Uh, there's always a fine line between is it too much, it's too little. And I think we've got a team that understands what we're doing and the base concepts and it's going to allow us to execute better. And so I think that's the big takeaway for me going in year two with this team and this league is like we've got to put our guys in position to just cut, cut them loose and let them play freely. You said in year two you hoped everybody who's been here could uplift the quarterbacks yeah. up a little bit. What have you seen from that, the totality of playmakers on this point? Yeah, sure. Team? Has that helped those guys? Sure it has. Yeah, I think the consistency with the receivers and the growth that they've made, not just with the three that, that we talk about a lot, but the guys that are coming underneath them. Um, you know, the, the consistency at running back, I think, has been really impressive. Just those guys have been really steady, whoever's been in there. Uh, and, and the O-line continues to get better and better every day. So it is. It's, about, it's everybody. It's all 11. You know, we, we all know that we talk about that position a lot. And for good measure, I mean, that's, that's the name of the game. you got to get good quarterback play. But you can't have good quarterback play unless you have the play around the other 10 spots that are as, as good as well. And, um, and I think that's, that's shown up quite a bit during camp. How are you feeling about the depth of your playmakers just around the quarterback? I feel good. I mean, I think we got a myriad of different guys that can can affect the game in a positive way at the Big Ten level. Um, you know, and I think the more options you get, the better off that you're going to be. And you know, I think I feel good about our backs. I think our tight ends have had their moments, and um, you know, and I think at receiver, I think we're we're in a good spot with our receiver right now. What can Aiden Laffrey add to your offense? Is he, has he reached that point in camp where he, you think closer. he can car carve out a niche as yeah, a so. change of pace guy? Or? I think so. I think he's, you know, he's certainly working at that pace. I think he's gotten better and better at being a true natural running back. 
I see the growth there. It made a nice run on Saturday, um, uh, several nice runs, but one in particular that was nicer than the others. And um, but you know, with his speed and his speed is elite. And you know, it's um, as a coordinator, you got to think you got to think uh, players, not plays, to a large degree. And has, has he carved a niche out yet? I mean. I don't know, you know, we haven't really gotten into the game plan man, mindset, but he's a guy that brings a skill set that's unique to us. Um, and from a day-to-day -day perspective, he's still learning to play the position. I've seen great strides there, and we, we love where he's at. You've used the term consistency a few times. Um, is that like a standard where you should be at week two of camp, or does year two kind of help level that consistency out, if that makes sense? Both. I think both. You know, you would hope that uh, this time going into practice nine or ten, um, you know, that you would have more consistency in what we're doing, but there is a level element of install, right? So you're installing, so it's always that, it's always that, um, that puzzle you're piecing together. You're going forward, but then you bring them back with some new things, you know, and those are things that are necessary for us to, to, to you know, to win, to play winning football. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I think between year two of us uh, understanding what we're doing offensively and just in within camp, I think that's kind of merged together with what you see a consistent approach. That doesn't mean it's been perfect. I mean, like, we, I don't think we've gone backwards any particular day. Today was probably one of our less, uh, at least underwhelming days in that regard, but uh, we just got to keep stacking days one on top of another. Have you found that Luke, his football IQ is obviously pretty high. Have yeah. you been, been able to kind of go back and forth with him through camp now and say, hey, coach, I like this, yeah. I don't like this, or I really need to work on this? Yeah, I think so. I think I do that with all my guys, you know, all the guys. You know, I've had those private conversations with, hey, what are you comfortable with? What are you seeing? You know, some of those guys have a stronger opinion than others because of their their training and where they've been and the system they've been in. Uh, and Luke's very in tune with, I think, who he is, what he is, what he likes, what he doesn't like. And when, when I call something that he likes, it's he's usually spot on it, you know. And, uh, and so as we continue to grow in our system, there's things that he's not as comfortable with that we're working through camp to try to get him uh, game ready, comfortable, the things that, that are different for our system that, that can help us. He talked about his baseball background, and I know you have one too. Does that open up things for him as a quarterback that doesn't for others at all? I don't know about that. I, I mean, I think there's a certain level that, that, it, that it kind of molds you and the kind of physically the type of player that you are, the quarterback, you know, like the release. And he's got a whippy release that looks like a shortstop turning a double play, gets rid of the ball quickly, which is really handy for the stuff that we do horizontally attached with our run game, you know, like the reliefs and RPOs and things of that nature. So it's really, really easy for him to do that. What is the healthy Sean Miller brought to you guys up well, Sean's, Sean's a competitor and uh, he's tough, you know, and he's, uh, that's, you know, I, I can't imagine, you know, there's other guys on our team that are doing, uh, you know, going through, you know, losing a whole year and, and with an injury and then a position like that where you're running. I think he's really responded in a great way. He's worked his tail off to get back healthy and uh, he's very multiple. You know, he's got a lot of flexibility uh, in, in our offense because he really can play all three positions. He can play left out, right out, and inside and uh, just continues to, to really show his desire to want to do well. What is Donovan gain with reps, just as many reps as he's getting? Yeah, just experience, right? So, I mean, there's a – literally, when you go in there and watch film at all positions, you go and watch the film and 120 play scrimmage, that's just – I don't even know what the number was. It might have been 50 for – I don't – I mean, somewhere – you know, I don't know the exact number. But, like, you know, all 60 plays, all 80 plays, every day we go out to practice every single play that they're involved with, there's something to learn from. Is it a technique? Is it a footwork placement? Is it a ball placement? Is it eyes? And so, like – not only, you know, they're all getting that, but with him in particular, he's getting better on every one of those exposures because he hadn't played in the game. And so that's the way he has to get better right now. Watching the film from Friday, what did you see from the O-line? And what are some things you think they, that they need to continue to uh, improve on? Well, they're no different than any of us. I mean, any of us positionally, just consistency, iron out the details, playing with great fundamentals, uh, strain and finish. You know, our guys, you know, we had some really, really nice looking reps and runs in the scrimmage and playing in unison, communication. Man, there's so much that goes on. And our defense puts an incredible amount of stress on you because of the way they play. It's a very unique scheme uh, of different ways to attack you that, that creates unique challenges, just to be quite frankly, and so, uh, be quite frank. And so, um, you know, the, there, there were some really good signs there of them communicating and being on the right page. And when that happens, man, I think we're really good. And then as we continue to grow, like we've got to get those things ironed out, just like we do at all positions. So it's we're striving for perfection. We know that probably we're not going to play the perfect game, but we're striving for perfection. If you're clearly going to roll in and out multiple backs this year, you've made the comment that Chase made us right a lot last mm -hmm. year. Do you have to be cognizant of when you make calls or when you when you're calling a game that 
okay, this is the personnel I have out there, especially at tailback. This is what they do best. This is, you know, because well, it's just different body types and sure. different skill sets. It is different, and Reggie and Josh are different, and Caden's different, and Aiden's different, and right. Jordan. They're all they're all a little bit different in that regard. So yeah, I think you have to have a little bit of an understanding about okay, I got this guy in the game, he played, but I really believe this strongly that that our guys that are in the game can do everything that we ask them to do. Everything that's in our system, our guys can do. And that they can make us right, too. They have the ability to make us right, too. And I'm excited about watching them run. Sounds like we've heard, like, Pat said he needs to take some reps inside and let slot and mention Sean. Like, is there more versatility among the wide receiver group this year? And if so, like, how can that enhance what you guys do offensively? Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, obviously Isaiah can play anywhere, you know, and Pat can play anywhere. And Casey has really got a stronger feel of what we're doing and going in year two of it. So. There's some flexibility. He plays left and right some based on the formations. And so I think like Hank and Sean and Canari and Ashton, like all those, Malik, all those guys, and, and I know George would attest to this, the more that they can learn, the more the more flexibility we have. Um, and so we've done it. They've done a great job of learning. So I think we've got some, uh, you know, some uh, plug and play uh, opportunities there. Where we can move some pieces around. Just even formationally, we can flip guys right and left and in and out. So. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to do that as we get into game action to, to change the look up out there. What's the key for the quarterbacks moving forward in camp? What's, what's next for them? Yeah, so it's, you know, it's um, continue to master the offense, understanding early down management of the game, and, uh, you know, taking what was, what's, what's given and keeping us efficient on first down, and then, you know, using, using the, their legs and their arm uh, when, to create opportunities and uh, money situations. You know, when we're in third down in the red zone, and. When it's important, uh, that's where we got to continue to make plays. We've made a lot of plays so far in camp. We need more of that. Coach Bielma you know, also you know, he emphasized early downs and offensively. Just what did you may learn you know, last year that you know, about the offense on being the way you can maximize maybe first and second down a little bit? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we want to have an efficient offense. And uh, that doesn't always mean that we're chasing four yards uh, in a cloud of dust, you know. but. But we, we want to have four yards on first down. So we need to have an efficient run. If we have a pass called that has layers, we've got to be willing to check the ball down, to throw the ball to second seven's a lot better than second ten, right? We have, we're going to throw the ball on first down. And we do, we've got to have high efficiency passing and passion decisions to where the quarterbacks, they, they are understanding when I give them the play call, I'm talking to them, saying, look, we're going to check this thing deep. And if it's not there, we're going to use our legs or check down underneath to keep us on track. Uh, and so I think we have to have balance in early downs. I know we do. Uh, but we have to have the ability to check the ball down and get us to keep us right on track. How advanced is the offense at this point in terms of playing with the tempo uh, that you want to see? Is that something that just in increases as you get more into the game? Yeah, or? I think that's fair. As we get closer to game, right now we're not as fast as I want to be, but we're we're thinking a lot. You know, I've got a lot on them, and so as we get closer and we minimize kind of what are we doing our first game and the game plan, like tempo will, will kind of emerge a little bit. But that's an area of uh, stress and concern for us this week. Not concern, area of stress this week that we are stressing uh, to our team about we got to play faster and we got to get back to the fundamentals of playing quick and using pace as our friend.